Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where today it's all about Cool and the Gang. Now, Cool and the Gang are one of my favorite bands of all time, and some would say that they're the best funk band of all time. I wouldn't disagree. But did you know that long before their funky, danceable hits that transcended the ages between the sort of classic funk era of the 70s into the electro-funk era of the 80s, going from strength to strength, before all of that, they were actually a jazz fusion band because the pedigree of all of the guys in the band, and particularly the two brother leaders of the band, Ronald and Robert Bell, they were all very much into jazz, even played with McCoy Tyner at one point in their very early days, um, one of the great jazz pianists of all time. And they formed several years before they made it into a recording studio to make an album of their own. They started back in 1964, but were riding the charts high after 1984, which shows you the kind of longevity that they had. Now, the key to this was that they were all super talented musicians. They were really flexible in terms of how they could shift between genres, and they had the musical dexterity that jazz musicians of that age had, which gave them the ability to be versatile. Uh, the first album, which came out in 69, was very much on that jazz fusion, jazz funk fusion, if you will, side of things. And this continued with Music is the Message in 72, Good Times in 73, and maybe my favorite Cool in the Gang album, Light of the Worlds, or Light of Worlds, rather, in 1974. That was probably the peak of their jazz fusion um, uh, style before they shifted more into the classic funk style that they became known for with Spirit of the Boogie in 1975. But even then, and even into the late 70s, they still had a lot of those elements in the music. It was less improvisational at times. The solos got slightly shorter, but that essence was there. The virtuosity was there. And while the long solos may have decreased, that was replaced by such good songwriting. Um, not everyone can write a song, no matter how good you are at your instrument, uh, which is why there are some virtuosos who people admire for their soloing, but you go, hmm, when they get to the part where they're actually uh, in the chorus of the song, because it's not very good. No such problem with Cool and the Gang, some of the best writers ever. And they just went from strength to strength to strength, celebrate their 1980 album. The, the eponymous song from that album has be it's gone on to become one of the absolute hits of all time. Then in 1981, for the album Something Special, Get Down On It, became a huge hit as one. Another great album, 1982. Wonderful stuff, beginning to end. In the Heart, a wonderful album. Joanna was a big hit. Then they came out with an album that was one of their biggest. So many hits. Emergency from 84. Fresh, misled, a great one. Cherish. And they just kept on going. And that really shows you that talent can transcend genres. If you're good at traditional jazz and good at funk, sort of jazz funk fusion, good at classic funk, good at electro funk, pop funk, then it can only mean one thing. You are super virtuosic because someone with mediocre talent can ultimately do one thing good enough. But to do all things great really puts you at that cut above. And that's what Cool and the Gang were. It's what they are, even after some of the founding members and mainstay members have tragically died. Listen to all of their albums. Make a Cool and the Gang playlist from the first album right up to the stuff they were doing in the late 80s. There's a lot of diversity of styles, but there's such a consistency in the playing, in the writing, in the arrangement, and the overall feel. It's great stuff. Don't sleep on Cool and the Gang. They were popular in their day. They should remain popular now. Like, subscribe. We will see you next time. Take care.